Hello and welcome to this Radio.co live stream. My name is Rhys and with me is Kate Cocker, the presenter coach. Hello. Today we are <laughs> talking about creative radio, ideas for shows, jingles and ads. So if you're wanting to start that radio station and you're not sure how to go about it or if you've got a station with us and you're thinking how can I refresh this, freshen, up, freshen it up, then this is the webinar for you. Um, we'll be taking questions later on, so be sure to comment in, in uh, the Facebook live stream or if you're watching on YouTube or on uh, Periscope. But uh, for now, we're going to go through a little bit of a presentation and talk about good ways to create content. And then also we'll be sharing some stuff around uh, Kate's presenter coach course with us, which is great if you haven't already purchased it and more later on. OK, should we, should we get on with it? Yeah, go on then. Sweet, <laughs> sweet. Uh, so first up is what makes ideas creative? So creative ideas are unique and fresh, not dull and boring. And not every idea is great or original, so learn to adapt. And also, don't be afraid to put things out there. So something we do is we have like a creative space where everyone throws in ideas, and some of them are a bit rubbish. Some of them can be quite good. But then together in a team, we work out what's good and what's not. But it's good just to always sort of come up with ideas and more. Uh, write, draw, and present regularly to hone your skills as well, because when you're presenting, it kind of helps to have that sort of... Yeah confidence I guess and I think as well that in this industry ideas are absolutely your currency so yeah. coming up with good strong ideas having those creative moments having the confidence to express yourself uh, and your ideas is really important for making sure that you're growing audience for your radio station absolutely absolutely so in terms of topics you can talk about it there's I mean it's a very long list but <laughs> things from news obviously real news from breaking events there's a lot going on in the world at the moment sports even like funny news stories uh, entertainment, like celebrity goss, like uh, often a lot more sort of hit 40 stations tend to go more on like things like the Kardashians or what's going on in the latest reality show, movies, games, books, uh, something funny like social media is quite good for this actually I find in yeah. terms of like dating mishaps or yeah stories from your childhood or like funny videos you've seen online and things like advice as well, especially for talk radio is quite good, health, fitness, relationships and more. Um, also, if you're a local station, it often can be good to sort of connect with the local community and things like new restaurants coming out and entertainment from your area. Uh, and also, of course, interviews. It's great. Interviews are actually a great way to get people to your radio station because if you're interviewing, say, a musician, then it's good to bring their audience to your radio station. One of the challenges, I think, uh, presenters find really regularly is that they're having to come up with content daily, especially if you're, obviously if you're doing a daily show. So production teams, you know, when I've worked on shows in the past, this is something that we always think about. We think about what we bring into the show. Are we doing something topical here? Are we doing something entertaining? Is it relevant to the audience? And, how, and what's our spin on it? How do we make it our own? Uh, and that's where the creativity comes in, I think. Absolutely. And uh, so there is scope to find inspiration from other stations also. I mean, you don't want to copy ideas, but you, if you decide what you want your station to be, whether it's a sports station or a talk station or a hit music station or a rock station, it's often a good idea to look at other stations that align with your own and see what they're doing, what you can learn from, what, what, they, what you could do better than that. And um, yeah, just, just compare with others and also look at other mediums as well, like social media pages and see what they're trying to do. Because mm. we live in a world now where Radio is obviously hugely important, but then along, often radio stations will have their own like Facebook feed or social mm -hmm. media, Twitter, Instagram. And so I think it's, it's good not just to look at other radio, radio stations, but other pages as well. We, um, I call this steal and build. <laughs> <laughs> this is steal and build or liberating ideas. So sometimes it's really difficult because you think, right, I'm going to go and listen to some other radio stations. And I think sometimes I find that I'm worried that the, it, I'm not going to be inspired, but I'm just going to end up copying the ideas and it's actually going to block me creatively. Um, but the, the the idea is that if you hear an idea, it's actually about, or you hear something really creative on air from someone else, it's actually about whittling it right down and bubbling it down to finding what was the idea in the first place? What are the skeleton, of the, what's the bones of this idea? And then how can you put the flesh back on in your own way? It's, yeah, it's, it's basically just taking it to the next level yeah. and putting your own spin on something. Steal and build. That's a good phrase. That. <laughs> so it's something we do at Radio.co's sister project, MCR Live, is do a lot of event-based sort of shows and content. So we'll so uh, there's a good video on the Radio.co YouTube of an event we did with Shindiger Brewery, uh, where we it was like an event with DJs and, and then we live streamed it on air on your station. It's really easy to do with Radio.co and something that you should definitely do. And so it gives gives your station presence both in the real world where people go into an event, but also it's it's additional content for your station. You can broadcast live or even record
record sets and play them back, scheduling them using the radio.co scheduler. Uh, it's something we are doing more of at MCR Live and Radio.co makes it super easy as long as you've got an internet connection. Uh, definitely check it out, there's some really good video content on that. Another thing is that we do, and you guys should definitely do, are takeover shows or just using people with an audience for your station. So at MCR Live we, uh, we get bands, DJs that are coming through Manchester to come and do a show with us. We, they promo it and bring their audience to us. You could do the same whether it's um, if you're running a religious station, get get an influencer in that space, or a sports station, get sports stars on, so on and so forth. And big stations do it, and there's no reason why your station can't do it for whatever audience you're trying to. And find. where did the idea come from for that? Um, it it was it was really what can we do differently with bands on an audio on a, in an audio space, and also give them presence, make it about them, and make them yeah. want to share it more than just another sort of ten minute interview on. On, on a radio station is making the content about them rather than 10, 10 throwaway minutes it's yeah. and like their choices their personality behind it rather than just the questions relating a new, new song and what are the benefits to you? we get their audience so yeah. they, they, they they will post it out on their channel some of them we've worked with bands that have hundreds of thousands of likes on Facebook or on Twitter or Instagram and then they they bring that audience to us and then we, we get more listeners which is what you want from a radio station. So when you came up with that, was there a brief? Did you have a specific brief or did you kind of? No, it was okay. like when we, when we started, it was like, how can we, how can we attract artists? We're, we're a new entity, how can we attract new artists? And we, we put out these ideas to some quite big bands in the UK and they sort of came on board and did it because they'd, they'd not had this opportunity to do it elsewhere. And I think that's, it's it's taking a twist on ideas that have been done in the past. Like Radio One have done in the UK have done it a lot on uh, with DJs, whereas no one's done it with bands so much. So we thought let's let's put a twist on it and put our own unique spin, and it's worked really well for us. And I think you could do it too. Yeah, and you've had some really good off the back of that. Yeah, you're able to then and do more social media. Right? Exactly. Um, so we can do video from it and uh, sort of promo post really tight. It, Building an audience is all about building networks, and if you can tie up with whether it's a band's network, a DJ's network, or um, I don't know, someone someone who's selling a book, or someone who's a uh, sports star, depending on what your station's all about, it's, it's it's combining those networks and bringing their audience to you. And creativity likes this, so creativity likes a strong brief. So you, it's it's really important to know exactly what you want your outcome to be, how you want the audience to feel. Um, Maybe it's whether you want to grow audience or it's about just creating a really lovely connection with your listener. Um, so it loves a brief. Creativity loves a brief because actually creativity is problem solving. Yeah. <laughs> and then from that, you haven't had to take too many big steps to get to that space, I don't think. What, what would you say when you're creating shows? What, what do you want from a brief in terms of... Um, it, in terms of, like, do you, do you want the end goal or do you just want an open-ended idea or...? Okay, so if I said to you, right, just come up with an idea, you go, ah, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's really difficult. You go, oh, well, I don't really, I don't really have, what do you want, you know? Um, but if you have a good brief and you know, you know your audience, yep. you know what you want to achieve, is this about growing audience or is this about building hours? So do I want my audience to listen for longer? Is this about building my social media platform? Is this about um, just becoming really credible and having that authority space in, in the genre that I'm working within? Knowing those is really important. I tend to ask questions like, how do you want the audience to feel? What do you want them to remember? Uh, and then I go from there. So often it's, we want to do an event or a thing or an event yeah, yeah. and we want to get this. Or we know we can get celebrities, but we want to get this, which is your, your outcome. And it's about marrying those two things together. Does that help? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, don't forget, if you want to ask any questions, comment on the Facebook live stream or on Periscope or on YouTube live, and we'll come back to them towards the end of the live stream. Uh, next up is jingles and adverts, a hugely important part of monetizing your station. So what should they say? How should you be creative? I'll just chat to Kate in a sec, who's worked a lot on uh, creating good adverts and jingles for radio. Uh, so we say, keep it short and simple. Make it memorable and catchy. Like the best radio adverts are the ones which you're singing in your head. Mm -hmm. So when you get out of the car and you're in work and it's some car dealership and you can't get it out of your head. Uh, ring, right tone and positive emotional appeal. Nobody really wants to have a negative spin on an advert. You're not gonna 
buy a, like buying something is a positive experience. You're not going to buy something if you have a negative tone. And message message you need a message that sums up your content. Um, like you, there's no point running a uh, an advert about a supermarket if it's not about food or the things you can buy there. Uh, we've actually got an example uh, from Tesco, which uh, we're going to play for you now. Tesco? Tesco ad? We don't have a Tesco ad, <laughs> even though it's, uh, it's in the... Fair enough. Um, let's do the, let's so, do the other let's, uh, So in terms of creating good jingles, Kate, um, yeah. we've got some stuff here, like good yeah. message, voiceover, music bed, and sound effects. You've worked a lot. In fact, you're yeah. working at the moment yeah, with yeah. Bauer Media and Key 103, which is a big uh, commercial radio station and group in the UK. You're doing a lot with that at the moment. What, what would you say is your what's your approach so, in terms of yeah, uh, creative? So basically, I make I, I tell my mum and dad that I make jingles because they don't know what el how else I can describe it. So they're jingles. They're the bits that go in between uh, the songs that aren't presenters, or they're the adverts, or they, they're promos that sit within the adverts that promote the station. And I make them. I, that's how I started in radio. So I I started out creating these thirty second pieces for various. Um, radio stations about 10 years ago and I've been away and done show production and then come back really recently. My favourite thing about it is if you have a good script you don't have to do very much production so uh, the Tesco ad actually is a really good example of that. <laughs> <laughs> where it's it's just voice but it's a really good script again I need to know what you want the listener to feel I need to know what the client's messages are so I need to understand what they want to get into it I need to understand the vibe of the station and then from that I will then create something I usually tap into me I usually go, right, how do I feel about this? I had um, a promo the other day about, uh, the, I think it was a, the range or something like that was opening in Manchester. And I put a promo together about uh, the sock that you find on the landing <laughs> because there's no storage for it. Like, how does how do socks end up on the landing? And that was because that morning I'd walked past three socks on my landing and not picked them up, obviously, and thought, how on earth do my children's socks end up on the landing? What's that about? It's really relatable content. Yeah. Because... So, and it's often the really yeah. the really personal things that become really universal. So I start there. I then flesh it out and I might use sound or I might use um think of a different angle and things like that um and the script often because it then goes back to a client needs to be quite straightforward so I think there's sort of levels of creativity the first level is you write your straight script and you've done the things that the client needs the next level up is to think about the language that you're using so I often will do a brainstorm around I'll go so I'm doing say I'm doing a a promo on ho a horse race that's coming up. Um, I'll go and find poems about horses and horse racing because then that will help me find the words that I need to infuse. So uh, rather than uh, you could win this, I, it might be you could race towards this or gallop towards this prize or whatever. Um, the next level is to then think about the angles that you are working within. And I've got a piece of audio now that I wrote for the National Trust of Scotland uh, a couple of years ago now. And they wanted to give away a family pass for a year to all of their places in Scotland. And it was being advertised on the radio station that you'll hear it on, which I think was Radio Borders, which is in Bower. And um, and I, I went round the angles and I decided to do it from the point of view of the ticket itself, of the pass itself. And here it is now. <laughs> Computer, show me what's coming up today. Save the city. Check. Save the world. Done. Next. Save the date? Cash for Kids Superhero Day is coming. Friday the 4th of May. Save the date. Like one of those wedding invite things. But for superheroes? Cool. Download your fundraising pack at cfmradio.co.uk slash superhero. Get involved. Raise funds for the little heroes in our community who need it most. Be a hero on Cash for Kids Superhero Day on CFM with Seely UK. Helping you to fall to sleep quicker, stay asleep longer. So you can hear it's from the point of view of the, the ticket. And I asked the voiceover to say, to, to pretend like she was hiding. <laughs> and I think you can hear that in her excitement that she sounds like she's hiding. So there are many factors that go into creating a promo or a jingle or, a, or an ad. Uh, the first thing is making sure you understand the message. The second thing is making sure that you have got the words right and that you've got the angle right and it's fun and you've got the right sound effects. Make sure your voiceover is good 
So sometimes we'll have voiceovers that don't emphasize the right words in a sentence. So you might want to say, so for example, you'll see on the screen in front of you now, you want, you want to persuade your listeners, but they may go persuade your listeners like that. You want to make sure that the emphasis is on the right words and that the voiceover is good. Um, the music that went underneath that was meant to be quite tinkly and fun. And as I said, the sound effects, there are very few in that because you don't really need them at all. But sometimes if you want a few whiz pops and bangs, it's worth having them in place so you know how to emphasize certain parts of the script. And in brackets on the slide, we've got some good places. So if you want voiceover, we found five is really good. You yeah. can, there tend to be quite a few people depending on like whether you want an American voice or a British voice. There's, there's loads of people and it. it tends to be like very good value for money. Uh, shockwave sound if you want beds. And also audio jungle and sound bubble if you want sound effects. Um, there's more info if you go to the radio.co blog. Uh, everything we talk about today, whether it's like streaming live from an event or jingles or voiceover, is all covered on the radio.co website. Okay, so we've we, we've put together some things that uh, our customers often think are really important to uh, to their station in terms of like what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong. And one thing that comes up a lot is how long do you think radio shows should should be to keep listeners engaged. How long's a piece of string? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess it probably differs from uh, format to format. Like yeah. Uh, as a for, as you used to run. Uh, yeah. P103 uh, as content controller. Yes. yes yeah, correct. Right. Right. Well so, so. Um, <laughs> and I guess the goals of P103 is it tends to be in 15 minute chunks. So, uh, well. In terms of trying to engage the listener. Well, okay, so in terms of engaging the listener, it is a presenter's job, or it is your job when you're running a radio station to keep them engaged for the next 15, 20 minutes. Especially in the UK, that's how we judge our, that's how we do our radar, so that's how we, that's the business of radio, is keep people engaged for the next 15 minutes, because you want that tick from your audience that is for that 15 minute, that 15 minute swing. Um, in terms of how long radio shows should be to keep listeners engaged, I don't think that people really listen in three hour slots anymore, I think... If it, it, keeping someone engaged is about keeping things moving all the time and making sure that you are being interesting and not being boring. Yeah. So avoid detail, uh, make sure you've got new things coming up all the time. Uh, Radio One Extra just made a documentary for them at the end of last year. And the advice when I was putting that together is that something needs to happen every minute or every 30 seconds to a minute, something needs to change. So when you're making a documentary, often you'll have voice of contributor Something, another contributor, another contributor, maybe a bit of music. And the advice was to just keep that moving at about at something like 60 seconds at a go. I think I, th I get the feeling you, you're better off doing something shorter and having more going on yeah. and more, more engaging things than spreading out over three, four, five hours and you're really lacking in, co in content. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you're doing, if you're running a radio station through radio.co, you've got the power of uploading and you can repeat content. Mm. So there's often an opportunity where, you know, someone who's, if you're listening linearly, linearly <laughs> to your radio station, you're very unlikely to get the same person listening at two o'clock on a Monday as you are at 7 a.m. on a Wednesday. So you can really play with your content and repurpose it and reuse it. And actually that then gives you the opportunity to repurpose it for social media and, and be everywhere online as well. Great. So next up is what advice would you give to someone that feels they're not the creative type? I hate this so much. <laughs> I hate that people think that you either are or aren't creative. Creativity is a skill and it comes in many, many forms. So for me to be like, I paint, I make things, I make jingles, I write, I coach, I, um, I, I'm a, making a podcast at the moment. You know, oh, really? there's lots going on. And I'm creative in all of those places, but I have to engage my creativity differently. So for as a coach, for example, where you'd have thought, oh, she doesn't have to be creative for that. It's my job to ask my clients the right question. And so I need to brainstorm and think of and, and, and work out ways to get the best for my client by asking the right question. And that's creativity. I think also it's good to have a good team around you that, yeah. you can, that have different strengths and weaknesses. And so you can, you can bounce ideas off each other and some people will add different things as well, which yeah. sometimes not all stations have, have a big team, but often if you're not sure on an idea, then speak to someone about it, because yeah. they might have an idea or they might give feedback as well. And creativity is purely a bit of self-belief and uh, expression, basically, yeah. and problem solving. So what, if you've got the self-belief and the confidence, then everybody is creative. I think often the people who are pinned up as creative types are the ones that have just kind of got on with it. 
Mm. <laughs> cool. Next up is what normally goes into preparing content for shows? So I said at the beginning, there's a real challenge here yeah. about, you know, coming up with content every single day. And often it, what you need to do is do something that is unique to you that means that um, you stand out on the radio. And that's where I think that that's what people mean when they say be creative. It's like actually do something that's unique to you. So if on Friday morning, um, like Theresa May decides to leave office or whatever, how are you dealing with that content that means that it's different to everybody else? What's your spin on it? You know, are you going out and interviewing people on the streets to see if they want to be the next prime minister? Or, or are you just reporting on what's happened in the paper? So it's about lifting that content up. The best place I can demonstrate this, and we're going to do an exercise now, Reese. It's going to be very exciting, and you can do this at home as well. So, have we got music, by the way? I'm just asking the team. Have we got 60 seconds of music to play? Okay. Okay. We'll do a different one. Okay. okay so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, what I usually do is I, uh, with a lot of the time, the presenters will talk about the fact that they have to talk about music that they have to play over and over and over again. It's the same song all the time. And so, I've got a really nice bit of. Um, uh, it's called kind of the 60 second challenge, but we'll say we'll do, let's think of a topic. What do you, we'll do it as a madman. Okay. Um, What's happened to today? Um, that's repeatable? <laughs> 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 or what's uh, happened on the station today? Oh, I don't think we want to talk about Brexit. Let's move on to something else. No, we won't <laughs> <do Brexit. laughs> Let's not talk about um, Brexit. Or do you want to do something more general, like, um, I don't know, lunch? Yeah, we yeah. could do lunch. Yeah. Let's yeah, do yeah, lunch. Yeah, let's do... Okay, so we go and have lunch. <laughs> All right. So I want you for the next... Should we try 60 seconds or do you want to do two minutes? It's usually two, two minutes. Two minutes, by me. I know. Two minutes? Let's go for it. All right. So for two minutes, I want you to write down everything that happened at lunch. And I just want you to write it down in as much detail as possible. Don't think, just keep writing and don't stop writing. Oh, he's off. I've got to start timing. So our boss James here at Radio.co bought, bought us all curry and pizza for lunch today. So, uh, which, uh, to celebrate <laughs> Easter. Okay, so write um, everything down that happened. Everything you observed, silly things, quirky things, go. I'm timing you already. Blimey, this is a lot of pressure. I know. Um, This really focuses, this really focuses mm -hmm. your mind on, on coming up with ideas. It doesn't, it's all about the little tiny things that you observe. Not long. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Strong, strong as could you my ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Um, okay. If anyone's uh, playing along at home, be sure to send in your ideas. Also. <laughs> um, oh, maybe I'm just not a creative person. I'm struggling here. Um, Keep going. Fifteen seconds. Um, Keep going. Keep going. What if? Okay, stop. My final word there was regret. That was the best bit of telly I think I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Silence. important though. It's a good... I there was lots of laughs yeah. coming through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of thumbs. A sad face. Um, what was this? <laughs> um, okay, do you want to go first? So I had free curry, pizza, lots of naan, jalfrezi, basically just listing all the things there. Hawaiian, which Hawaiian's not my thing pizza-wise, but... but uh, Why is Hawaiian not your thing pizza-wise? Just pineapple and ham doesn't do it for me. I'm, no. I'm sorry if... Uh, people quit the live stream because of that unproductivity because I just spent this afternoon just sat in a chair <laughs> slightly bloated grogging out um, I can tell. 
yeah. <laughs> had to rally for this live stream. Um, everyone's scrambling to get the naan breads. It was, it was a bit of a free for all. Um, and uh, everyone was really excitable. I think partly, partly free food, partly bank, ho- bank holiday weekend vibes. Um, also, I had a haircut today, which was great, and I ran back. But I do, my final word is regret because I ate a little bit too much. About the haircut or the food? Both. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> okay, so what I would do is if I was in that situation, I'd then have you read that out and that might be that we would then brainstorm as a team yeah. or with other people to kind of to get where we wanted to get to out of that. So say we're going to do a promotion on lunches or on food, we might do something like this where we go, right, we're going to do a promotion on lunch, we've got to do this with a client, this is how we'll do it. Or I know I've had, I know, I can't, I'm trying to think how it would relate to if you've got your own radio station, how a lunch topic might come up, I guess just to... You know, you might want to talk about what you've had for lunch that day, and but actually something funny happened over lunch, and there are some little bits and pieces that you want to put in. So in that, I can hear you've eaten so much food. So, too much, way too much. But the picture painting for me was everyone scrambling for the naan yeah, bread. Yeah. Why is everyone scrambling for the naan bread? Why is that? And then you've got a really <laughs> they, good they, they nugget. Did t- they did taste really good, to be fair. You've got a nugget, a starting point that you can really work on. And that only came, that's like, if you look at that list, it's like the eighth or ninth thing on that list. Yeah, it is. Took me a while to get there. But. And, and this is the thing with creativity, is that you've got to really push through that kind of crust that is our everyday, where we're going, I am this person and I can communicate very well, but actually you've kind of got to get below that. And that's why this process works really nicely, because you're stretching yourself into finding new paths and new routes into your brain. So my one is... Yeah, what did you have? I had a banana for lunch and then I had to wait because I was running late. And because I because I was running late, I, I and I had eaten, when I got into work earlier, everyone was waiting to go for their lunch. And I don't know if you have this in your office, but when everyone gets ready to go for lunch, everyone sort of gets their jackets up, zipped up and they all stand around in reception, all kind of hunched shoulders like this, waiting for everybody. And I suddenly thought, what if... Well, they look like they're going for a secret meeting. <laughs> they look like they're going shady. for a secret meeting. It's all looking very shady. Why is my boss going for a secret meeting? And then I started thinking about, and I've written it here, maybe they work for MI5 <laughs> or something like that. So you can really start to really extend. And that was just two minutes work where I've got some nice content that I can use or a rich vein that I can use around what happens when you go for lunch. Or have you ever noticed when your boss goes for lunch, it's always it always feels suspicious and it shouldn't but when your boss is walking out the building with someone else you're thinking oh god and there's your relatable content yeah there. absolutely absolutely and as, as i say uh, if you want to ask kate any questions about how you should draw draw content from scenarios or live or anything anything else don't forget to comment in the facebook live stream we'll be answering them all at the end um so next up between radio and podcasting which has more creative freedom would you say uh, 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 <laughs> uh, I think both are equally as creative. It depends. Like, there's so many different types of radio. That, like you can't. It's like, difficult to. Podcasting, you have, you will have more personal freedom. Although, if you're running your own radio station, you've got your own personal freedom. If you're working in a radio station that has guidelines and branding, format, and all of that, you have rules. But as I said, creativity likes a brief. It likes a box. So actually, you get to be very. You can't if you're a, if you're able to engage your creativity, then you can do it in whatever format you want. There is, There are differences between radio and podcasting, massively. But I think it's to do, it's a lot to do with, I, you know, choice at the start, I suppose. I think sometimes with podcasting as well, people are overwhelmed by the choice. And I think sometimes yeah. radio gives that focus. That yeah, you that's can, true. Can, you can sort of double down and focus that creativity so that when you write your two minute list, it's like choosing lunch and not just saying your entire day, yeah. two minutes. Um, yeah. But obviously there's positives of both. And uh, yeah, uh, but radio, radio is su- super creative. And when you start your own station, you can be as creative as you want. Yeah. So that at the end of the day, if you want to start your own station, you're, you're, you're in charge of that station. No one needs to tell you what to do. Um, next, um, radio stations can be sometimes restrictive in terms of creative control <laughs> over content. How, well, we, we've kind of just discussed this really. We How have. can people wonder, make shows whilst they're with? You know, there's kind of, there's broadcast regulations. Uh, I think I think we've got to really determine what we mean by creativity here because there's wacky bonkers. <laughs> is that creative? Well, is that more creative than the fact that Steve Jobs sat in a room and, created, and invented an iPhone? You know, that there's 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 lots of different forms of creativity. I think when it comes to creative control, yeah, it's all about branding and format and just maintaining within your broadcast rules. Really, you you're not going to do. It's a bit of a it's a. Uh, my belief is that the 
yeah, you are going to come in radio stations. You do come across people who say, "No, that's not going to work," and so that's where the creative control goes. But I think as your responsibility as a presenter is to make sure that whatever you are doing, you are bringing yourself to it because that's when the listeners believe you. And so my belief is that actually there is no such thing as creative control because you should be creative within the space. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. If you could make any radio, this is a very open-ended question. If you could make any radio show today, what would it be about and why? This is a really good example of why you need to be really specific. Yeah. <laughs> so if I could make any radio show, well, at least there's a specific in yeah, there, yeah. any radio show. Well, the podcast I'm making at the moment is about talking for a living. So that's about my world and that's what I'm enjoying and the purpose of that is to promote what I do as well as to research what I do and see if the things that I love about communication run true. So there are lots of different whys in there. I guess I think I guess just be true to yourself and yeah. like if there's if there's a topic you want to talk about or if there's something that's happened in the news, it's just just yeah, just be true to don't be be genuine, be authentic. That's what makes great radio. And the best, I mean, the best thing about the world we're in now is we are supporters of doers. You know, YouTube. If you look at those YouTube channels, like the first videos that they do are rubbish, right? But they get better. If you go back to the first episodes of podcasts, sometimes they're dead clunky, and you listen. You know, you're not aiming for, for perfectionism here. You're aiming for getting it done. And actually, mm. by getting it done, I'm saying this. It's taken me blooming ages to launch my <laughs> podcast, but but. Getting it done is the best way for you to be growing something rather than, you know, it's the hardest thing to start. So start, do, work out what your voice is, work out what you care about. And, and I don't think, I don't think if you're starting a radio yes. sh station, you would ask this question. Yeah. I think you just go and do you, it. You just got to sign up and start yeah. your radio station. That's the easy thing to do yeah. and, and run with it because at Radio.co is such a great platform to do whatever you want, really. And the team are there to support if needed yeah. we're going to take a short break to have a look at kate's uh presenting courses like if you've got a load of presenters and you, you're not sure how to like coach them in the right way or mm. if you're a presenter yourself and you want to take yourself to the next level and become a great presenter then this course is amazing i've i've been through it myself i i would i'm better i wouldn't call myself great <laughs> but um, <laughs> but I it's got, well worth your I time better. Uh, it's well worth your time and uh take a look how then do you get your topic that you've chosen into a story or into a feature? And how do you find what it is that your listener's gonna really care about? How do you bubble it right down? Now, early in my radio career, I worked with or came across a radio consultant called Bill McMahon, and he introduced this idea of the madman. Now, the madman is essentially a brain dump. You put on a piece of paper everything that you think about the topic that you're going to be talking about. And what I'll do with my presenters is Say they come to me and they go, oh, I've got to do something about Valentine's Day. I'll go, OK, right. What do you think about Valentine's Day? Get it all down on paper. I did it the other day, in fact, with a client of mine. She came to me wanting to talk about the Kim Kardashian picture that had gone on Instagram. I'm sure you've seen it. She's completely naked and she's just put black squares over the areas that she, uh, she doesn't want you to see. And so what I did was I asked my presenter to get a piece of paper and write down in two minutes everything that she thought about this. It's something that a lot of radio stations were covering. So really we had to make sure that the content was really personal and unique to her. So we both did the list and here is what came out of it. So you can see the stuff towards the end of the list is what makes it dead personal. The stuff at the top tends to be dead generic, you know, like you might have found your list of 10 things to be true about yourself was because that's the zone that we're operating in all the time just to get through the day. You were going into that lower level of the list to make sure that you're getting, really tapping into what it is that connects you to this piece of content that you found. The presenter then went and chose one of them. The two at the bottom for her were about makeup and about her eyebrows. So she went for the makeup one. Now it's not about choosing all of them or two of them or trying to get all of your points into that list, into your, into your content. It's about choosing one and making that really, really good. And all makeup, no pants was her punchline. So you can imagine how we managed to get that shaped into a link. The thing about this is she's not making a judgment. She's not saying that she wants Kim Kardashian deleted off the face of the earth. She's making an observation that's true to how she would react to it. And also with her audience being female, 25 to 44, she's talking about something that is dear to my heart all the time. How vulnerable can I ever be? if I'm with makeup or without makeup. 
The interesting thing about using the madman is that it also works if you're trying to hone in on how to tell your story. If you've had an experience or you've, you've gone through an observational moment that you think, oh God, right, there was loads going on there, but I don't quite know how to shape it. Maybe set yourself slightly longer than two minutes, but get down on paper everything that happened all in order and really picture paint, really go for it. So take your topic, do the madman, two minutes, write everything down and then look at what you've got in front of you and pick the one thing that you think is great. This describes every single creative process that I go through. Whenever I get a creative brief, this is exactly what I do. There's that adage that nothing great comes out of a brainstorm. Well, actually, that's because brainstorms are often with a lot of people and no one's facilitating. If you do it for yourself, this is about you getting everything on paper, not trying to go and find something weird and kooky, but get everything that you think down on paper. And to do this, you need to just repeatedly ask yourself, when you stop within that two minutes, go, is there anything else? Is there anything else? Is there anything else? And write down everything. No filter, no judgment, because that's how you'll find how you actually really think about something. And then you can filter it. Then you can put the brain on it. And then you can put, your list, put the content through your listener and you can decide exactly how it's going to appear on air. The timing is quite essential. So even if you do slightly longer than two minutes, stick to a set time because that makes it really instinctive. You're forced to go with what your gut says and what your heart says rather than what your brain and your logic says. You've got to go with that because, again, that is what makes it personal. And as I keep saying to you, <laughs> and you're going to be repeating in your sleep now, the more personal you are, the more you connect. So that was uh, a clip related to Kate's course, How to Be a Great Presenter. It's available <laughs> on uh on the radio.co website, www.radio.co slash courses. And for all information about things we talked about, like radio jingles or uh, live streaming from events, go to the radio.co blog or the university. There's so much going on. It's, it's really the go-to place to, to for the information that you need to start your radio station. Okay, so we've got questions, questions. from our social media live streams. Uh, first one, I like this from Dorothy. Uh, what is a brilliant idea for a radio station that hasn't been done before? Um, I probably wouldn't be here if, yeah. if we knew. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> um, building a radio station is about building a community. So it really doesn't matter what your radio station is about as long as you are authentic and honest and you build that community and you know that community. Uh, for example, you might do a whole radio station about rugby or American football or gaming. It all matters and counts now. Uh, the most likely reason that people are going to come to your radio station is for the music i would say yeah, yeah. or a clear talk radio topic i mean that's what happens in kind of commercial and yeah real world you know yeah what big, industry big, big radio industry, yeah, yeah yeah so we tend to do music or talk and the talk tends to be very well topicked so we know that you're going to go to a sport radio station or you know you're going to go to a, with the music you know you're going to go to uh, an electronic style music radio station yeah. um so just think about what it is that you want to do, what makes you you, what you're passionate about. And if you build it and you do it consistently, people will come. Absolutely. It's just being true to yourself and giving, as we said earlier, giving it a go. Like there's nothing stopping you starting your radio station. You just got to do it. And there's nothing wrong with adapting. It's like what you said about first iterations of YouTube channels or yeah. podcasts. It's the same with your radio station. You do, just because you started it as a sports station, doesn't mean you might veer off into talk, or if you started it as a pop station, but actually you find that rock is working better for you. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't change that down the line. It's, it's finding that finding that sort of, that right niche or that right market for you. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Akolo uh, Clement uh, says, I have a radio station here in Ghana known as AfroWakeRadio.com. Nice. I have a challenge with programming and finding the right audience, any ideas? So kind of similar to what we're it's saying, really. It's a similar really. thing, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's that thing of just doing what I, you do and hoping that. I guess I guess things are. like if you want if you want a sort of older male audience, it might be sport, or if you want a younger sort of a female audience, it might be pop music, or same with same with rock, or if you want, I don't know, if you want yeah. a sort of older female audience, it might be like uh, sort of eighties, nineties tracks. It, there's, there's no there's no written rules per se, but it's it, it depends what you want, what audience do you want, and how. Maybe if you if you want a certain audience, maybe work backwards. Yes, and I think be really clear about what your product is. So 
There is a reason why you listen to radio stations and they say, play the same songs over and over again. And that reason is that if they keep that playlist really tight and that rotation really tight, it means that whenever you tune in and if you're only listening for 20 minutes, you know what you're going to get. That's your brand. And actually, if you start playing songs that are maybe from the 50s next to songs that are from today, you're going to really it's quite jarring, struggle, yeah. I think. Yeah, with you know people who are into that music might not be into that music. So it's really about making sure that you're really focused on what you're about. I saw a great talk, Helen Zaltzman and Roman Mars, who are really two big podcasters, talked about setting up. Um, I, I went to an event in LA, check me out. Uh, and we'll they, some. Oh no. <laughs> uh, but they did a Q and A at the end. And the, when someone said, oh, what would you say about setting up a podcast? How do you make your podcast stand out? And Roman and Helen both agreed that actually, if you work out what the mission of your radio station is or your podcast is, work out what it is, what it, what, what's the purpose of it? What is the mission of it? So for example, talking for a living, my mission is to help people understand communication better by talking to people who are really very good at communicating and what can you learn from them to take into your everyday life because really we're all talking for a living, right? But they said, don't tell anyone that. So I've ruined it already by telling you, but don't tell anyone that and then create everything around it. So have a really clear mission of what you want to achieve or what you want your audience to understand and then just create around it. Absolutely. In fact, there's a really good question here. Uh, if you've got a really good idea, is it better to start a radio station or a podcast? But I would Ooh. say both, because the great thing about Radio.co, for example, you can create a podcast or you can create a show and it can exist as a standalone thing, but also you can schedule it to go out. And if you've got 10 great shows or 10 great podcasts, they could just play one after the other. Yeah. And so I'd say do both, do both. It makes sense. There's no point in cutting off a certain audience or a certain platform. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. And then I think in this day and age, you know, just because someone's listening to your radio station doesn't mean they've heard your podcast. And just because someone's listening to your podcast doesn't mean they've heard your radio station. So actually, by having them both existing, you've got uh, more of a chance of building audience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, next up, we have a question from, uh, bear with me a second. Alec? That, that real DJ oh, right. Smooth. <laughs> How do you get a phone number that you and other presenters in different locations can use as a radio station number? Well, I don't have the information with me, but where you can go is the radio.co website, radio.co slash blog. Uh, but there are loads of things you can do, whether it's like having a line engine mixer or getting a certain software. But yeah, make sure you have any sort of more technical questions, head to our blog or email studio at radio.co. Um, I have an interesting content, but don't know where to start. Sad face, help, exclamation mark, <laughs> from Alex Markov. Sad face. Uh, sad face. <laughs> um, I would say for this, um, well, watch back over this. You obviously missed the first half of our uh, of our last yeah. stream, or maybe. Um, what 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 is your goal in in producing content, producing a radio station? I guess that mm. if if you don't know where you want to head, then where, where do you start? If you don't if you don't want a certain type of audience, or if you don't like, how can you, you kind of need to know what you want to do before you before you have an idea of what content to make? I guess yeah. in, in a sort of way. So decide what kind of radio station you want. Do you want it to be music? Do you want to do you want it to be sport? And until you kind of decide what the bigger picture is, I guess you can't fill in the gaps. I tell you what I do. I I tend to I have I'm I'm what they call multi passionate, and I have lots of ideas all at once, and I don't know which one. I get overwhelmed with them. And actually, the biggest benefit is sometimes to just record something, or you know, this is what I think I'd like to do but you don't know quite what it sounds like. You don't know there until you go there. So actually, uh, my advice to you will always be just start recording, press go, record something. You don't have to broadcast it. You can listen back to it and you can then start to flesh out from there. The hardest step is starting. So if you could just do something that's really easy, make that a little step, it's a lot easier to build on what you've got or to just throw it in the trash and go, right, that's wrong, let's start something else. And don't forget, you can do your free trial at radio.co. It's free for seven days. Uh, just sign up and have a play and see what you can do. And then you know what, if you if you need help, just come and come and speak to our, our guys here at Radio.co and they will sort you out. Uh, oh, we've got some good ones. Next up, how do you, com uh, how can one, very uh, proper English that, how can one combine a, a music and chat format successfully? What advice can you offer me, Juan R. Segara? Well, Kate has worked on many radio shows across the BBC, Global, Bauer here in the UK, big, big networks, mainly on music and chat format, right? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. 
how how I mean, how would you how would you best form how how would you best plan for that? What's the best balance you feel, or does it completely depend? <laughs> it does. It depends. I think uh, the main thing is being clear about what you're doing. <laughs> 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 I'm just coming back to it at the same time. Know your audience. Know what you're doing. Match those two things together. Boom, you've got it. There is, you know, combining music and chat is actually really lovely. If you, you know, when you're when you're talking about music and chat, I'm going to assume that you mean you want to do something that's sort of 50-50, which means that there's going to be more chat than you might hear on, say, a commercial radio station where it's heavy music, 60-second breaks in between where the presenter speaks, and maybe some ads as well. Um, and it's a difficult game to play because, you know, all the research comes back and people who like music like music and they just want to hear the music and people who like chat like chat and they just want to hear the chat. Um, but there, there are radio stations that do it. In the UK, the BBC local radio does a lot of uh, good content, 50-50 nearly, maybe even more talk to music. And I think you can, if, as long as the content is strong and you're clear about what you are trying to achieve, maybe through the production, the music can come as a light bit of light relief. The thing I would say is just give it all context. So do your topics, do them well, make sure the song isn't inappropriate based on what you've just been talking about. <laughs> um, but also make sure that you're providing context to that music. So the music doesn't just appear. It's like, right, we're gonna play this now and this is why, that kind of thing. I guess it's got, got to join up. It's very jarring to have, have a really serious topic and then have some, sort of some yeah, really, yeah. really light, airy poppy pop yeah. song. Hanky panky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Next up is from Tour Music. What's the best way if you're creating a station network for shows from different cities? Well, mm. that is the beauty of radio.co. Yeah. You can, because it's all done through the power of the cloud, you can connect from anywhere. All you need is good internet connection. So, for example, uh, 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 sorry, uh, our MCR Live project, we have lots of shows from our main studio, but if we want to do shows from different studios, we just connect. All you need is an internet connection that you can be anywhere in the world, whether it's 4G connection or wireless, um, Wi-Fi, wired, you can do it from anywhere. All you need to do is just make sure you're using, uh, let me go to sort of Icecast <laughs> or like Butt, B-U-T-T, um, things like that. Um, it's all on, again, it's all on the radio.co blog. And if you want to try it out, just go to try.radio.co. Uh, and look, there are loads of radio stations doing this online. And I, even when I started in radio, I was working on a digital radio station, DAB station here in the UK. And all our presenters were all around the country. My husband now works for Virgin Radio. I can't yeah. remember the name. Virgin Radio. I can remember the name. <laughs> uh, and the station's in London, and he does his show from another part of the country. So it's all really possible, and it's all like this is what we're doing at industry standard as well. So how exciting! That sounds like a great radio station yeah. already. Like loads yeah. of different, you know, tour music and all of that. It's a great way to build up your radio stations to have it have presence in different places as well. So I think that's a really good idea. And radio radio dot co makes that really easy. And again, if you've got any problems, just get in touch with the guys studio <laughs> at radio dot co. And yeah, it, it's really easy to do. And there's loads of there's a few videos on it as well. I'd really really worth your time checking it out. Um, do we have any more questions? There's one more. That number, uh, the one from Ricky Lynn. Um, Ricky Lynn Parvin says, I've been out of the radio biz for four years now and I feel I have so much to learn and catch up on. I have no idea where to start looking for advice. Just start. No. Just, just, <laughs> a, just start. B, if you're looking for advice on starting your radio station, then the radio.co blog and university pages are amazing. And the YouTube, the videos on YouTube are fantastic. If you're looking for more how to get into radio, I guess... You, um, yeah. Kate's probably a good person to, to talk about that. I, I don't know where in the world I mean, yeah. you are. I um, but I would say that there's one thing that stands out in your sentence, which is that I've been out of radio biz for four years. Now, you probably are feeling that, you know, the radio industry changes very quickly and there's lots going on in that time. It does, but it also really doesn't. I remember when I went on maternity leave and I left radio for about two years in the end because I had two babies very close together. And I said to my friend, everyone's going to have forgotten who I am. And I came back and no one had forgotten who I was and I hadn't forgotten how to do radio. So there's a lot, that, I think the best thing that's happened in the last four years is that people like radio coexist, and yeah. there are plenty of places that you can just get on air and start. You kind of don't need permission anymore to publish. You can just go ahead and do it. So that's where I would start. I would start with where your heart is, get going, get something on air. And if you're trying to get further into the radio biz or industry, that's what they're going to be listening to. 
Yeah, and if you're looking for a way back in, I guess using radio.co is a great way of showcasing yourself and showcasing what you can do. And then you can go to someone who works at your local commercial radio station or national broadcast and say, this is me, this is what I do, this is what I can give to you, help you. And it's a great, yeah. It's, and there's, it's, there's it's also a really good course. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, So the, the Great Presenter course will really help you as well. So it will help refresh your memory of what's important to go on the radio and you'll probably get some new tips as well. Go to radio.co slash courses. Kate's course, How to Be a Great Presenter. It's fantastic, not only if you want to be a presenter, but also if you want to run your station and uh, want to manage talent in a way that can really transform your station to the next level. Yeah. Um, that's it for our live stream. Thank you so much to Kate for, for joining us. It's been really Thank good. You. Thank you so much for all your <laughs> questions. And remember that if, uh, Kate's course, How to Be a Great Presenter, and also um, check out any questions you have or any anything we've brought up, like jingles and how to be creative. There's so much on the radio.co blog and on the YouTube page uh, and just across the website. And any questions, remember, you can get in touch at studio at radio.co. And if you want to start your station, if you, it, now is the time to do it. If you're going to be creative, just do it. Don't don't hold back. You can have your seven-day trial. Go to try.radio.co. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon. See you.